Alright all, alright all, I all, I all, I all, and welcome back to a new video. Min for the Ryanair 12, and it is Envoi Allen. You could give me a thousand to one on my fight, and I wouldn't back him. Shakan Forsois will win at the Ladbrokes Dub and Chase. I was all over him at Christmas. And David Splain thought he was riding Duvan, I think. Those are one of the ones you're there going, oh jeez. And it is classical dream, please shoot me. Faheen the Machine. Hi all, and welcome back to a new video previewing the Clonmel action uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 24th of March. Back to jump racing after nace today and i'm going to put my hands up to you guys uh, today was a bit of a shambles at nace as i thought it kind of might be i did say it in my video that you know early season flat racing just wouldn't be really my cup of tea i kind of put the selections out because i want to be doing these daily videos uh but that's just there's an unpredictability about it that honestly you can't you can't get anywhere near and especially when I'm doing the videos I'm doing the majority of these videos around kind of six o'clock the previous day and yet you're getting market moves 10 minutes before the off time like I, I can't predict what's going to happen there but I am extremely glad to be returning back to a bit of jump racing here at Clonmel don't think we've many more days left in the tin, to be honest, before they might call this uh, racing. So let's just enjoy it while we can. Starting off with the two o'clock, uh, Maiden Hurdle, and I'm going to take the side of Far Mix here. He is the favourite. He's best price 13 to 8 at the moment with Bet365. He's got some good form in the book. He was fourth in a bumper behind Grange Clare Native and Jungle Junction. Jungle Junction's gone on and won a Maiden Hurdle since. He was then second to Lord Royal. In a maiden hurdle, beaten a fair way, and then second to Grudy Rover for course and distance last time out. He was evens last time, and he didn't get the job done, which I suppose is probably the only nagging doubt you have with it. But it's a poor race tomorrow, and really you'd be liking to see Liz Doyle's horse go in. The 2.30 is another poor race. And again, it's one of these where I think you could try and find something, but I think probably sticking near the top of the market is best off. And I'll be taking a chance here on Kosoban. Uh, he's again best price three to one uh, with Bet365 as well. Uh, his bumper form was average enough. He was 11th point exit pole and 7th to Politess, who obviously we won on a few days ago. Now she's a pretty good mare. Uh, but on hurdling debut, fell at two out uh, in a race won by Future Proof. Now, Future Proof isn't no world beater, but this horse was certainly not done with at two out and could well have run him close. Uh, goes in here um, in an equally soft race, let's be honest. And this mare could still be progressing over hurdles and hopefully compensation may await after that fall last time out. The three o'clock is an a rate is a handicap hurdle for horses rated eighty to ninety five. It's a poor race, you know that. I've taken a bit of a flyer on one here, a horse called Dreal Deal. I don't know whether it's Dreal Deal or Dreal Deal. Um, it's Ron McNally's horse. Owen O'Brien takes the ride, taking seven pounds off him. Look, you look at his uh, point to point form, and it's quite good. Like he was third and second in two point to points. Nothing to be sniffed at. Uh, but his on-course form is honestly absolutely dreadful. And you're probably looking at me going, how on earth are you tipping something that's got those sort of form figures? And it's just a hunch. He's rated 87 here. As I say, he's getting £7. So he's off 80. Like, he's pretty much bottom weight here stuff. If he was to replicate any sort of that point-to-point -point form, he'd have a chance in here. And 16-1 to 1 could prove to be big. The 3.30, uh, beginner's chase, a very poor beginner's chase at that. I'm again taking a flyer at one at an each way price. A horse called Muta Dafek uh, for Gavin Cromwell and Jonathan Moore. He's 16 to 1 with Boyle Sports, uh, mostly 14, 12 to 1 available. As I say, he's an each way play. He was rated 113 over hurdles. Now that's much better than a fair few of these. A fair few of these were poorly rated over hurdles. Even a horse like Classic Concord, who's second in the betting, was only rated 105. So he's a good hurdler in comparison to some of these. His two runs over fences have left a lot to be desired. But there's been a bit of nibbles 
on him. He, he opened up, I think, 25s, and he's now down to 16s already. Uh, be interesting to see whether market support will be sustained for him, and maybe tomorrow could be the one. Bits and Pieces is probably the horse to beat. He's got the solid form in the book, but it, as I say, it's a poor race, and I'm going to take a flyer. The 4 o'clock is the feature race, uh, the rated chase, and I'm going to be siding here with Bacasson at 11-8. to 8. Um, I know it's another favourite, but I've added in a few each-way plays to try and kind of mix it up. Uh, but he's just got the best form in the race. So a few couple of years ago, he used to mop up these sort of races like nobody's business, beating better types of horses, the likes of Atois, Phil, and stuff like that when he was with Gordon Elliott. He was off the track for quite a while after disappointing in the Boyne Hurdle in 2019 when Tiger Roll won it and reappeared last time out when fin uh, sorry, um, in the Boyne Hurdle this year when third behind Cracking Smart. Went on to run a really nice race in the Carl Cup, staying on from the rear. He was almost last all the way, came through to finish sixth uh, behind Dam de Company. Back over fences here. Hasn't been over fences since falling in the Gold Cup, so I suppose that's your only concern. Death Duty was really gambled on at Cheltenham, but didn't seem to run any race. And the rest of them have to give weight to Death Duty and back us on, which I can't understand how that's working. But he should, uh, to be honest, I think he should win here, and he'd probably be my nap of the day, even at uh, pretty prohibitive odds of 11 to 8. The 4.30 a handicap chase. I'm siding with a horse called Ask Heather here. Um... For Terence O'Brien and Simon Torrens. Won on a chasing debut last year. Over two miles at Tremor. Uh, has only been seen twice this year since moving to Terence O'Brien. Was fifth last time out behind Jamil. Jamil's not a bad horse. Not a brilliant horse, but not a bad horse. And before that was third to uh, an improving Joseph O'Brien in base called Del Ganesh. She's 9-1 to one here with Paddy Parr. Mostly 8-1 to one available. Um, Simon Torrance takes a useful four pounds off her back and Simon Torrance has been in rich form recently so running off a mark effectively of 105 could see this mare to good light and she should run a, a good race the five o'clock uh, has one of the biggest talking horses uh, probably in the you're going to see over the last week or in the next coming weeks uh, how much racing we'll see or not because of Tony Mullins giving this horse a really big kind of Big up on the At The Races preview night. A horse called Kill Cruz. He's been backed off the boards already. I think that's just people on word, to be honest. But I will be siding with him. I think it's just interesting, more so from my perspective, with Patrick Mullins booked. Patrick Mullins would have the choice of the Willie Mullins horse, I assume. Doesn't ride it. And also rides usually a lot of uh, Henry de Bromhead's goods. Um bumper horses as well so you'd have thought he might have had the chance to ride the de Bromhead horse he's picked Kilcrute instead Kilcrute's five to four you are taking it on trust but he is extremely interesting anyway that's all for today's preview as I said earlier I'm very sorry about the selections today uh, but to be honest the winners that were winning I would have never picked so I don't feel almost too bad about it because I was just off the mark it happens Happens to everyone at some stage, and hopefully we can get a bit more success now returning to the flat action. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below, and let me know your opinions for Clomel tomorrow. And until tomorrow, I'll see you next time.